So it first kicked off for me when I was in year 10. So at high school, two New South Wales police officers came and spoke to, spoke to my class about forensics. So I think it was called scientific section at the time. And from that point on, I knew that's what I wanted to do, um, be able to help police solve crime, which was the scope of forensics at the time, but also serve the community. So it's quite amazing. I think for me it was um, hit, um, hit home pretty early on when I was in high school. So I was in year 10 and two New South Wales police officers came and spoke to my class about career options and they were talking about the scientific section at the time. And for me I'd always studied science and was a little better at science than some of the other subjects. Um, and it really appealed to me because it was the application of science to do something meaningful for the community to help police solve crimes. which. Uh, for me was just so interesting. That transition or that awareness came when I was in uni studying forensic science and um, I was in my fourth year doing my honours project and AFP were listed as uh, an industry supervisor um, down here in Canberra um, for my honours project. Um, so that's, that's where my affiliation with the AFP began in 1999. Um, and then I did a very short stint um, of work experience as well in, in the holidays. So that's, that's where I became aware of the AFP and everything that they do um, and some of the amazing people that worked in the AFP. So that's what drew me to the AFP. I was 23 when I joined the AFP. Um, so I was straight out of university and it was in January 2000. I think the biggest highlight of my career has been um, being promoted into the AFP's Chief Forensic Scientist role. And I know that sounds a little bit corny and perhaps not a highlight, but for me, being responsible and accountable um, for the, the amazing people that work in the forensics portfolio, whether or not they're, they're scientific um, expert, uh, scientific professionals or technical experts or um, enabling professionals, they're all amazing people and watching them day in, day out develop their capabilities and deploy them to have such impact on the criminal environment is just a really proud moment for me day in, day out. I think one of the highlights of my international work was probably my first offshore deployment. Um, so as I said, I started uh, in the AFP in 2000 and I was mainly brought on to help develop an explosives um, capability for the AFP in preparation for the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 in case something happened. Um, but unfortunately, um, and fortunately, we had a capability ready when, when the bombings went off in Bali in 2002 and that was my first time to deploy offshore with the AFP. Um, and, and really experience what the AFP had to offer um, offshore and, and absolutely an outstanding um, opportunity for me. You know, I got to realise, you know, some of the sensitivities, the challenges, um, the expectations, but also the opportunities where we could actually help and support um, our international partners, but also for the, for the Australian community. For me, my experience in working in the MH17 investigation was one, again, completely outside of my comfort zone. So this is obviously quite a few few years into my career um, and really was an opportunity for me to step up um, again into, into a leadership role this time offshore, um, a real opportunity to work with international partners to again bring the best of what the AFP in Australia can to something, again, a very, very tragic and unimaginable um, incident, but how could we actually help? So for me, I performed the Australian, Australia's DVI commander role, taking over from Dr. Simon Walsh, um, and then transitioned our support um, into the broader forensic investigation to support the, the joint investigation um, team offshore. For me, as, as I said, it was the most probably challenging time in my career, stepping into a leadership role to directly support the Australian government. And at the time, the, the role was very much to, to bring the Australian victims home um, as part of the international DVI effort. And previous to that, I hadn't for, performed a leadership role in DVI. Um, so it was a, a real, real challenge. But with that, huge opportunities to, to watch our members work offshore and give everything to never give up, never complain, um, always self-sacrifice, watching people, you know, deploy offshore so they could be there and offer all they had whilst at home they were missing, you know, their, their children's operations or first days of school or whatever it might have been. Um, again, just continues to remind me the amazing people that we've got in the AFP 
Um, and I, I couldn't obviously do it alone and I was outside of my comfort zone. So those members were constantly advising me, supporting me and just watching, you know, particularly in the forensic space, our members, um, our people developed the forensic strategy that underpinned the whole international investigation that still to this day, six years on, is informing judicial um, decisions. Absolutely outstanding. Not so much in a specialist field uh, like forensics. Um, I've always, or, or for the most part, had supportive uh, male leaders, so that's, um, that's good. Um, but there have been times in my career, and I, I can think of one early in my career where a senior team leader outside of um, my area had made a comment to my team leader um, that perhaps I should be given an opportunity to, to do some training. And, you know, it took, um, and I think at the time that was because my male counterpart, who was absolutely a friend at the time and um, smarter than me and all those things and an extrovert and I was an introvert and sort of a quiet uh, performer, um, he had been getting all the opportunities. But this team leader spoke up and said something and that opened doors for me because I got the development opportunity and really broadened my perspectives. I think the biggest change is probably over the last couple of years is, is the, the intentional development and, and also promotion of female sworn officers. And for me, that's, that's a positive experience because I do like to lead as part of a collaborative team across the AFP. So me working alongside my female counterparts um, and also male, male commanders um, is actually a positive experience for me because we get to work together to, to deliver on the Commissioner's intent. Um, which is a positive experience. I would tell the younger version of me to uh, live more in the present moment um, and to not stress so much about the future um, and to have um, more regard to having balance in my life. So really picking those moments when you need to be at work and those moments you need to be at home with your family and having more self-confidence and backing myself more.